What's going on YouTube? Hello my tackle hoarders out there. APFA back in the test tank for you today. We have for you the missile baits. This is the Crawfather. The color is El Diablo. There we go. Um, I have this Texas rigged on a 4 aught EWG. And I think this might be a half to a 3 8 ounce weight um, pegged. Um, this is a newer bait for me. Um, I'm starting to get into some of these smaller baits. Uh, this is a four inch bait, I believe. I usually end up throwing, you know, uh, lizards and worms that are at least eight inches long, you know, uh, brush hogs, stuff like that. So I'm starting to get into these smaller baits on the tougher days. Um, it's a cross dial bait. We'll take a look at it real quick. Um, I don't know. Very similar to something like a, a Speed Craw or a Mr. Twister Buzzbug. Something like that. You can obviously see that these two claws here, appendages, whatever you want to call them, uh, going through the water <clears throat> is going to create a lot of disturbance and vibration in the water. Um, like I said, that was El Diablo, and I also picked up another bag. Uh, this color is uh, Bruiser Flash. And that's basically like a black and blue with uh, a bunch of different flake in it. All kinds of color flake. Um, the El Diablo um, has really got a weird bottom to it. It's kind of a almost like a green pumpkin red swirl through that. And then the, the top of the bait, the back of the bait, is black with red flake. Um, I think that's going to be a good color. I just saw Realistic Fishing do a video not too long ago on these. And, you know, he, he seemed to like them. He caught fish on them like that. Um, in my opinion, you're going to be fishing two different style craw baits. Other than, like, a beaver style bait. You'll have one of these that you're going to swim through vegetation, you know, to swim back to the boat to keep those claws working. Um, use this as a trailer on um, like a spinner bait or a chatter bait, something like that. Or you're going to be punching it like that to get that action out of those claws like that. The second style of craw that everybody's probably going to be fishing will be something like this. Really a do nothing style craw bait. It's still got a, that excellent cross profile, but going through the water, it's really not going to do anything. Um, when I fish something like this, it's going to be on probably like a football jig, something like that. Um, I'll do a video later on like that. I like to keep these baits that really give that uh, profile of a crawl, like the one I just showed you, um, in that defensive position. I think that's a more realistic thing. Um, I don't fish a whole lot of like skirted jigs. So um, I use a lot of unskirted like football jigs for, for, you know, late fall like it is now when the bass move up to the shallows. They see a craw, they want to eat that. Um, and I also use them for bed fishing. You know, you bring them onto the bed, you stop them like that, and just kind of hop it like that the bass will come up and usually, you know, eat it. But these, my, my plan is swim, stop, swim, stop, swim, stop. That kind of, of uh, retrieval like that. Or I'm just going to straight swim them back on a slow retrieve. You can see I, even on a slow retrieve, you're still getting a ton of action out of those. 
Um, I'm planning in the future to stock up on more of these and probably some speed cross and do a comparison. Um, I went to Tackle Warehouse. There's mixed reviews on both of them on which one's more durable, which one more catches more fish, and even the action out of those claws. So once I get those speed craws in, of course we'll throw those in the test tank and see how that compares. But uh, like I said, I'm more of a power fisherman. So I like to keep the baits moving. You know, let it fall, start cranking again. Let it fall, start cranking again. Or just a straight retrieve. And I think that's going to work out well for me like that. But you can see those claws on this thing. You know, even on a slow retrieve like that, still pushing out great action on that. You know, I, uh, like I stated before, probably a very good pitching and flipping bait. Like I said, I haven't tried these before. This is going to be uh, my first goal here. Like I said, I'm, I'm starting to get into this market um, of throwing smaller profile baits like this to uh, start catching more fish. Because every once in a while, you know, you're not going to kill them on a 10 inch worm or brush hog all day or anything like that. So, figured we'll get into that game. Um, I picked up the. The uh, Menace Scrub for the Strike King, and I had real good success on that. And that's a four inch bait, awesome tail. Get a lot of action out of that, or appendages, what do you, whatever you want to call that. I do, I do a video on that, so check that out if you haven't. And I figure why not keep going in that direction with some of these more smaller baits. Um, we'll give you a close up view of the bait one more time. And we'll get on out of here. This is your standard kind of a craw profile there. Um, it's got little legs on the side here that are paddled. So that could give off some more vibration there. But that's it. I think it's going to perform well. Like I said, I went to Tackle Warehouse and I was reading on these, you know. And uh, they say it's a good bait. I haven't fished it, like I said before. But I'll keep you guys posted on that. But I'm going to get on out of here. This is the Crawfather and El Diablo, Texas rigged. Um, four inch, like I said, a four aughts. Fits it just fine. That's how I'm going to fish a Texas rig like that on a 4 rod. But uh, thanks for checking out the video. Like the video, share the video, subscribe if you haven't. And uh, go check out uh, my channel and see if there's anything else you guys wouldn't mind checking out. But uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks.